everyone, and welcome to a new series of Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Diane Morgan and Russell Howard, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round call of This is the Answer, What is the Question? On the board are six categories. Diane, which category would you like? Environment. <clears throat> okay, your category is environment. The answer is golf balls, tyres and rubbish. What is the question? Is it the things that Fergie tried to pawn to pay her rent? <laughs> <laughs> is it what does John Terry put under his duvet to make his wife think that he's actually in bed? <laughs> <laughs> is it what is Heston Blumenthal going to make a pudding from next? <laughs> Is it what are this summer's additional toppings at Domino's? <laughs> <laughs> what three are the gold, silver and bronze prizes at the Tramp Olympics? <laughs> Is it a description of the bouquet in Lidl's own wine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tires. I'm getting tires. <laughs> are they burning tires? <laughs> no, not yet. What was in the worst Kinder Egg ever? <laughs> Is it what, what would your topics of conversation be if your dinner guests were Tiger Woods, Lewis Hamilton and oh. Uncle Bulgaria? <laughs> <laughs> is it what does Nick Clegg have new responsibility for in the new government? <laughs> Name three things Hugh Dennis hasn't done a voiceover for. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this to you. <laughs> Continental. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what does Optimus Prime ejaculate? <laughs> Is it what do you find in the stomach of a Louisiana pelican? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's close enough, to be honest, yeah. Is it You're doing it wrong, Is it <laughs> what, are, what things have BP fired down that oil well in the Gulf of Mexico to stop it? That's exactly right. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, the question I was looking for was what items have BP officials used in an attempt to block the flow of oil from the damaged underwater pipe in the Gulf of Mexico? This is BP's attempt to combat the worst oil spill in American history and the so-called junk shot is one of several methods that has failed to stop the leak. How is BP dealing with this? They're doing, they're doing badly, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of oil washing up on the shores of Louisiana. But I suppose, you know, it is a complete reversal of the normal state of affairs. This time, the oil is, in fact, invading America. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things that BP tried to do to shut it down was to put a, a top hat dome yeah. on it. You can tell the Tories are back in charge. <laughs> <laughs> top hat, I think, and if that doesn't work, then a deer stalker in the front of a Bentley. <laughs> It does smack of anything that's in a Monopoly set. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll try the top hat first, <laughs> top hat first, then the small dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the iron. No, it's, 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 it's like they all sorts of stuff down there. It wasn't yeah. just golf balls and tyres. I think they used um, human hair. Yep. It was human that hair. That would work, yeah. Soap. It was like it was like the chairman of BP had looked into his bathroom <laughs> basin and gone, well, that's pretty well clogged up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It's like they're reading from, like, an old wives' tale to try and fix it, isn't it? It's Oil a... leak in the sea, use a tyre or three. <laughs> <laughs> Horrendous pollution, golf ball's a solution. <laughs> I was... Pipe's got a hole, use a stale sausage roll. <laughs> just heat the oil up so that when it spews out into the ocean, it just instantly turns into batter? <laughs> and then they can just snap it off and sell it to Scotland. <laughs> so just, simply just add vinegar, then you have a seafood salad. <laughs> and, then, and then you can mop it up with some delightful bread. Yeah, That's yeah. all you need. I think That's all run, you need to just do. run some bread along the Louisiana coast <laughs> <laughs> to take the last of the oil, the delicious oil. Up. Yeah, it does actually look like salad. Yeah, it looks yeah. horrible, but also, mmm, delicious. Balsamic. Mm. <laughs> That's, that's where Tesco's get their finest rates. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, though, because we have the technology to solve it. We should let Aggie and What's-A-Face do it. Yeah. <laughs> how, clean, how clean is your ocean? And the yeah. thing is, it takes them no time at all. Everything I've seen them clean only takes them half an hour. <laughs> I'll tell you what would soak up the oil is lots and lots and lots of seabirds. <laughs> <laughs> There was, a, there was a piece on the BBC website about the golf balls and tires, and it was just horrendous. They've lost 40,000 this, and it's covered 2,000 square miles, and it's just horrendous, and Barack Obama's kicking ass. And then right at the very end, it says, the first two oil birds rescued have been cleaned. <laughs> um, it's not all 
of bad news, two birds are now slightly better than they were a week ago. And the best news is, uh, we're due to be released back into yeah. the wild later today. <laughs> there you go, fly away, not there! Oh, no! <laughs> In America, they've really been blaming Obama, haven't they? They've just kind of, he needs to fix it. And you're like, he's a president. He's not Jesus. <laughs> so stand aside, everybody. I'll soak this up with my afro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obama, Obama got in trouble because he called it British Petroleum, right? Now, because the reason he said British Petroleum was it used to be British, right? Yeah. But then you're thinking, well, America, that used to be British. <laughs> <laughs> in which case, we can do what we like with it. <laughs> I love that Cameron phoned him up and, yeah. and, and told him off. Cameron told Obama off for saying British Petroleum. He said, you're making this a matter of national identity. Cameron basically played the race card with Obama. <laughs> a special kind of balls for an Eton and Oxford educated white posh man to ring up the black president of America and go, you're being a racist. <laughs> How much would you love to have heard that phone call? Because he clearly didn't bollock Obama. He clearly, like, oh, I've got to call Barack Obama. <laughs> it would have been like me, age 12, ringing up Jet from Gladiators. I'd have been like, oh, I'm going to do it. You really could win a bugle stick. That must be a bad moment when Cameron comes home and sees the post it on his fridge, ring Obama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you, it, would have been, it would have been like, you know, some white middle class kid trying to score drugs. And like, hi, Obama. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Just chillaxing, this in a Motown, that sort of <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> can you stop dissing BP? <laughs> just throw a bomb. Listen, Cameron, cut the bullshit. <laughs> Fix it. I'm gonna kick your scrawny ass till Wednesday. <laughs> Went pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> but Cameron seems to be able to have a conversation with himself. Do we need higher taxes? Yes, we do. <laughs> are we gonna have a free and fair debate about that? Yes, we are. <laughs> Is this that debate? Yes, it is. Uh, in other news, what's going on here? This is the new Sugar Babes lineup. Um, <laughs> they're promised to be really rocking. Everyone can be in the Sugar Babes now, can't yeah. you? Or at least claim to. That's a Labour leadership contest. Uh, it is. And that's Diane Abbott saying, uh, OK, final guess, is that one Ed? <laughs> well, wouldn't that be great if Diane Abbott was going, Ed, Dave, they all look the same to me? <laughs> Diane saying, if you were a fruit, what fruit would you be and why? And that question yeah. goes to brother number two. <laughs> <laughs> or is she saying, hey, doesn't he really look like Bert from Bert and Ernie in Sesame Street? <laughs> or is she saying, no, I'm not the woman from the number one detective agency? <laughs> So, uh, Diane realises she's going to be the meat in a Miliband sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, I'll, be the first, I'll be the first black woman to lead a British political party since Margaret Thatcher blacked up and went to the costume ball as <laughs> <with> Robert McGowan. <laughs> <laughs> and then came back, they came back with most of his policies and enacted them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is nice to see the two Miliband brothers up there, though, isn't it? You know, they're saying that Ed is, in fact, the more normal of the two brothers, but that's a bit like saying that Reggie was the kinder of the Cray twins. <laughs> <laughs> I did some quick research on the Millibands, and apparently they've both got over 100 legs. I think they should get together. I think they should join forces, cos a milliband times a milliband, that's a billyband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> well, billyband works. Balls doesn't work. No. Balls... <laughs> balls is... What, Your balls, balls don't work. Balls. My balls do work. Ed balls <laughs> as a name. Like we've, we've just recovered from, as comedians, from eight years of a man called Bush uh, in, in, in one political office. I mean, it just doesn't... It's just having Prime Minister balls just, you know... I'm sorry. <laughs> The son would love balls to be the prime minister. They yeah. would, they'd be loving the headlines they could come up with, hitting the balls, balls up, trying to photograph him in a large farm next to a massive rooster. You can see the <laughs> massive <laughs> cock and balls. Yeah. They would actually adore a massive rooster. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't just bring the Bounce rooster. The they, they couldn't just use that. a like perspective <laughs> trick. Or go, okay, no, just hold the rooster in your hand <laughs> and put bread balls there. That'll, that'll work. That'll work. Go on, kick. We've another one shot. Just the idea of this crazy scientist make the rooster bigger, <laughs> then we make the call. <laughs> 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 we make the money. <laughs>
do think, like, Ed shouldn't worry if David does get the leadership, because, you know, after a few months, his mum will go, oh, David, give Ed a go, <laughs> don't be <laughs> mean. But also, you couldn't really run against your brother and not... Like, if you were losing, you'd pull out a family secret, Ooh. wouldn't you? <laughs> Straight away, like, yeah, well, at least I didn't shit myself at Wookie Hole. <laughs> <laughs> A round called mocked out in the quarterfinals as usual. This game involves <laughs> Milton, Andy, and Diane. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. The first subject is the coalition government. Any persons? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they told us to vote, we voted, and we now have a government that absolutely none of us, in fact, voted for. <laughs> yes, we managed to get rid of brown, but we now have some mixture of blue and yellow, so it appears we've got brown all over again. <laughs> And you may have seen we had Richard Littlejohn in the Daily Mail describing the new coalition as like the film Brokeback Mountain because it involved two men working closely together. <laughs> I would like to describe Richard Littlejohn as like the film The Shining. <laughs> a dangerous psychopath sat at a typewriter going demented, typing the same crap over and over again. Okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is accents. Who wants to come in on that? Diane. Um, apparently, they're going to start using more regional accents on things like computers and answer machines, you know, because people are getting bored with the usual American or posh sounding voices on things and they want some alternatives. And I was trying to think what else you could have and then I thought, imagine someone's trying to force the door on one of those talking cars and instead of it going, stop, move away from the car, this car is alarmed, instead of that you get, oi, get off, you'll break it. <laughs> I think they should get an old woman to do the tube stops on the London Underground. <laughs> this is Callie Eswood. I'm 87. <laughs> this is Hanger Lane. I used to have a friend who lived in Hanger Lane. <laughs> She's dead now. <laughs> Leaves us with Milton. Let's see what subject. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. The subject is family. One of my earliest memories is seeing my mother's face through the oven window. <laughs> As we played hide and seek, and she said, You're getting warmer. <laughs> My auntie Jean got a sister called Jean. Her daughter Jean just had a baby, called it Jean. <laughs> they went to a nightclub to celebrate. They got to the door and the bouncer said, sorry. <laughs> You're all wearing trainers. <laughs> sorry. My grandfather, Jean, Always complaining about how much things cost. You know, £1.50 for a cup of tea, £2.25 for three custard creams. I said, look, Grandad, you just popped round. I didn't invite you. <laughs> <laughs> My other grandfather, he was always going on about how in the old days people could leave their back doors open, which is probably why his submarine sank. <laughs> My other grandfather. 
When he died, we didn't even get the chance to say goodbye, which was all the more poignant because he drowned in a bowl of Cheerios. <laughs> is called Headliners. Here's a picture of the England football team before their first World Cup match. What does E-D-O-G stand for? It's actually all the things keeping Ledley King together. <laughs> Elastic bounds, duct tape, oil and glue. <laughs> <laughs> Should it be read in a German accent? And is it actually England dreadful? Oh, goody. <laughs> Are they all looking at Peter Crouch going, either dinosaur or giraffe? <laughs> What they're thinking about John Terry. He's doing our girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, I know what it is, it's what Phil Neville's doing during the World Cup. Eating donuts off Gary. <laughs> is, it, is it actually it's just the word edog, which is the way that Wayne Rooney says hedgehog? That's <laughs> <laughs> off. Is it 11 dodgy overpaid geezers? <laughs> Is it a Sun headline? England done one goal. <laughs> <laughs> and why is Wayne Rooney pooing a foot? <laughs> Have they got the number of times they've been on Faithful on the front of their shirts? <laughs> <laughs> is it England's draw opening game? It is indeed. Well done, Chris Addison. <laughs> The answer I was looking for was England draw opening game. England made a stuttering start to the World Cup in South Africa. They drew their opening game with the USA after a massive goalkeeping error by Robert Green. Do we all enjoy it? Well, you have, yeah. to, you have to feel well, sorry. Seems for... that were too loud in Irish accents. <coughs> uh, do we all enjoy it? We, yeah, but you have to feel sorry for Robert Green. Apparently, he went into the dressing room and put his head in his hands and dropped it. They made Robert Green do a random drug test. Yeah. What were they expecting to find? Night nurse. <laughs> <laughs> In the paper, they said brilliant, and they said he would bounce back. But that's what he tried, and he still couldn't keep it. <laughs> I, did see that. I did see that John Terry said that everybody should get behind Robert Green. Yeah. And I think that's a brilliant <laughs> idea. You feel so sorry for that. You see all these sort of blokes go, oh, I could have saved that. Oh, no, you could. Look how fat you are. <laughs> you look like a potato in a shell suit, mate. You couldn't have stopped that. <laughs> Oh, I could have saved that. She's in a home. She thinks she's a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> every, every international tournament, you, and I obviously have to say, you know, because I'm not English, you do this thing where you go, oh, my God, we're the greatest, we're the greatest, we're the greatest, we're the greatest, oh, my God, we're the greatest. You're like X Factor parents. <laughs> pushing you slightly not good at singing child into the audition, going, go on, sing, sing your song. You're just as no. good as the Brazilians. <laughs> sing your song, <laughs> sing your song. And then the child goes, la! And it bam, it gets kicked out, then you go, you're shite, you're the worst singer, you're the worst child we've ever had. Yeah. But Dara, as I understand it, this, this poor guy, Rob Green, Robson Green, is it? Yes. yes. Robson Green. Robson Green, who, I don't know why anybody thought he'd be able to, he can't hold a note, let alone. It was, it was, it was, a, it was an ITV deal, he was on oh, some sort of thing, yeah. It is. yeah. It's Ross Kemp next week. It is, yeah. Oh. <laughs> However, I, did you see it? Did I see... The Did goal. you see the goal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't see the goal. That's because, fantastic. Because uh, we were watching it on ITV High Definition. Get it. And ITV <laughs> High Definition very deftly cut to a Hyundai but, commercial. Well, uh, <laughs> let's be honest. When I found that out, I instantly ordered an HD TV. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that that was a that... function? <laughs> Who knew that HD came with pain relief? Why on earth would you be watching it on ITV High Definition? A football game that features Wayne Rooney, presented <laughs> by Adrian Child. <laughs> you would, in fact, be like going to Specsavers if you lived with the Elephant Man. <laughs> well, actually, it's not that... I have, I have one telly that does it, right? Yeah. And I have a smaller telly which is nearer the fridge. I haven't turned on the high-def one yet, right? Because, you know, it's like, ah, beer, or a bit of a walk to beer. Uh, and, <laughs> and the pictures aren't that better. They're just slightly clearer. Have you thought about putting a television in the fridge? Oh. Yeah. So when you open the door... How cool would that be? <laughs> well, it would be cool. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'm, I'm just delighted though, because most people who own, you exception, Dara, but most people who own HD telly are just bores. You know, it's amazing, high def, can see everything, man, can see everything. The only way it could have been better for me, instead of the high Hyundai advert, it's just that bloke going, go compare. <laughs> <laughs> you just have people there going, Whoa! <laughs> if, Do you know what I mean, better? If it was an ad for HD telly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you joining this picture, Chris and Clear? Get off the screen! <laughs> Best thing, as far as I'm concerned, best thing about the TV coverage so far is watching Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer try and figure out what Emmanuel Adebayor is saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's plus because they're yeah, don't just concentrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try not I, to I, look racist. <laughs> <laughs> Understand a word you're saying, Emmanuel. <laughs> nod, nod at him. <laughs> But the South Africans, they, they really love their football. I mean, they've got a bishop whose surname is a football score. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cracking joke. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely little joke. He's mad as rat shit as well, Desmond Tutu. Did you see him? Yeah. Proper yeah. bonkers. I, I know <laughs> half his pin number. <laughs> <laughs> Twice. But did, you, did you see him for the World Cup concert? It was absolutely beautiful. Desmond Tutu came out and wake me up! I'm dreaming. Mm. I gotta be dreaming. <laughs> Everyone's here. Yeah. France, Germany, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> it's slightly irritating, though, because their big claim in South Africa is that they are the rainbow nation, right? Yeah. Where's Zippy? Where's Bumble? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen them anywhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just using, I, I think, yeah, I think if I, Bungle was playing in goal for England. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right, back off. Uh, yeah. uh, how is the World Cup helping this country here, then? Uh, it's the By, economy. Uh, yeah. we're, we're spending loads on flags. Yes, yeah. you are. <laughs> Lovely <laughs> flags either side of a car, which does have the added advantage that when they've got them there, there's a little gap where you can get a coat hanger in <laughs> to break into the car. <laughs> the trouble is the cars that normally have got flags on them, the most valuable thing in the <laughs> car is, in fact, the flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so awful, though, isn't it? Because there are a lot of people, you can tell people who don't understand football or don't watch football, because they are the people who, when the cars go past with the flags on, they don't understand what it's about. And you can see them standing at the side of the road just sort of going. <laughs> An awful lot of very unlikely people seem to have been elected mayor. <laughs> <laughs> It's also, uh, Anne Summers have uh, reported that sales of sexy female ref kits have gone through the roof. <laughs> and you're like, who in their right mind wants their girlfriend to dress up as a ref? <laughs> Talk dirty, yellow card. <laughs> How should we do it? Anal, red, straight red, get out, get out. <laughs> How dare you? At the end of that round, the going to Chris Hugh and Meltdown! Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is... Commercials that never aired. <laughs> our website shows the complete range of pubic wigs. Compare the Merkin dot com. <laughs> Want to dress like you've got no GCSEs? Come on down to JJB! <laughs> this ad may be thoroughly misleading. The product may not work and it may burn your face off. <laughs> Carlsberg. <laughs> Don't do liver transplants. <laughs> <laughs> but if they did... Up with your dull grey hair, get used to it. You're a squirrel. <laughs> the Daily Star, because it's cheaper than toilet paper. <laughs> Have you been injured in a trip or fall? Would you like to be injured in a trip or fall? <laughs> oh, Barry. <laughs> Incest. Just do it. <laughs> Uh, Marmite. You either love it, or you hate it, or you think it's OK, but you'd rather have marmalade. <laughs> I'm a rabbit, and they test makeup on me. 
<laughs> but I don't mind because I'm a bit of a slag. <laughs> Burger King. Because you can't taste anything when you're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got long, dry hair? Could we stuff it down an oil well? <laughs> Churchill, have you been rubbing your ass on the carpet again? <laughs> Hello, I'm Carol Vorderman, and this is my grandmother. Yes, I will literally sell anything. <laughs> <laughs> I used to drink Strongbow Cider with my mate Dave, but he was killed by an arrow. <laughs> Christmas every day with new Brussels sprout flavoured condoms. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> tastes like grandma's ankles. <laughs> Do you want your erectile dysfunction dealt with confidentially and sympathetically? Call floppywilly.com. <laughs> okay, the next topic is things you don't want to hear in hospital. I'm afraid it's the big C. It fell off the sign at Curry's and hit your wife on the head. <laughs> um, whose penis is this? <laughs> Come on, push! Push! We've got no staff and the bed needs moving! <laughs> <coughs> so, just checking your notes here, uh, your Mrs A. Oh, I'm sorry. You've got MRSA. <laughs> you have a cute angina, and your tits aren't bad either. <laughs> and if you don't want to know the results of your tests, look away now. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you something funny about Dr Thomas. In his handwriting, the words tonsils and genitals... <laughs> look exactly the same. <laughs> We're going to put you to sleep now, because you're old and it's the kindest thing to do. <laughs> so, uh, talk me through it again, Mrs Hopkins. You were having Sunday dinner, and you said to your husband, will you carve? And he just lay down on the floor and gave birth to a baby cow. <laughs> Of course it's upsetting, but, you know, Hitler only had one ball and look how well he did. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hospital Radio, I'm Chris Moyles and I'll be with you for the next 14 hours. <laughs> Accept this sacrifice, almighty oh Satan! <laughs> I don't like the look of the charts, Mr Wilkins. Dizzy rascal at number one. <laughs> How many fingers? That's right, two. Fuck off. <laughs> well done, very good. Here that round. Point for Russell Van and Andy. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Diane Morgan, and Russell Howard. <laughs> Commiseration to Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis, and Chris Addison. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. Comedy, football, all roll together. Catch the World Cup Comedy Collection on the new BBC Comedy website or flick to BBC Three for Lee Nelson's Well Good Show Quality. And later here on BBC Two, some storming games in the World Cup. It's match of the day at 11.20.